From falling moons to morbid time to boring takes on toxic masculinity, it's no surprise these sci-fi flicks weren't quite out of this world. With an estimated budget of $140 million, Moonfall is one of the most expensive independent films ever made. The title is fairly self-explanatory. After the moon is mysteriously knocked out of its orbit, the astronauts Jocinda Fowler and Brian Harper join the conspiracy theorist Casey Hausman to save Earth. It's a throwback to a genre director Roland Emmerich has plenty of experience with, having helmed such sci-fi disaster films as Independence Day, Godzilla, The Day After Tomorrow, and 2012. Unfortunately, audiences have grown tired of his routine. Moonfall failed to gross more than $60 million at the worldwide box office. Outgrossed by the comedy sequel Jackass Forever on its opening weekend, Moonfall continued to decline into obscurity. I might cry. Unfortunately for Emmerich, film critics weren't any kinder. Although some reviewers have argued that Moonfall is so ridiculous that it's entertaining, with the potential to be resurrected as a cult classic. The ending of Moonfall is so completely crazy that the few people that actually saw it in theaters were shocked. The film teases the potential for an entire franchise, with Emmerich stating before the film's release that if it was successful, he wanted to film two sequels back to back. At this point, that seems like an unlikely prospect. Yeah, it's a Lucky for me. It's Morbin time! Morbius has been the laughing stock of the superhero era for several years. Originally slated for release on July 10, 2020, Morbius was pushed back several times due to reshoots, concerns about the COVID-19 pandemic, and the box office success of Spider-Man No Way Home. The film is set within Sony's Spider-Man universe, which also includes 2018's Venom and 2021's Venom Let There Be Carnage. While the two Venom films were surprisingly entertaining, the same could not be said about Morbius. The film follows the blood scientist Dr. Michael Morbius as he attempts to cure a rare disease that he's come into contact with. Although Morbius is able to cure himself by capturing vampire bats from Costa Rica, he is accidentally transformed into a vampire. As a result of my procedure, I have an overpowering urge to consume... blood. Morbius must become a hero when his surrogate brother Milo gains the same powers. Sounds fun. Unfortunately, it's a boring slog that doesn't distinguish itself from other comic book adaptations. Is this the part where the mysterious guy with the hoodie comes in and kicks everybody's asses? I love that part. Even though the film ties into the Venom and Spider-Man franchises, audiences couldn't be bothered to give the film a shot. With an estimated budget of over $75 million, Morbius only grossed around $164 million at the global box office. Following the tepid response, Morbius memes swept the internet. Leto tried to take ownership of the film's reputation by teasing a potential sequel. A re-release in theaters didn't pan out, and Morbius achieved the rare feat of bombing in theaters twice. Pixar has been in a strange state ever since the beginning of the pandemic. Shortly after theaters began to shut down in March of 2020, Pixar's Onward was made available on Disney Plus at an earlier date than what was originally scheduled. The Pixar films Soul, Luca, and Turning Red were also made available on Disney's streaming service instead of hitting theaters. Understandably, Pixar's staff was irritated by the company's decision. Animation is hard work, and a film that was made for the big screen deserves to be shown in its intended medium. Pixar made its return to theaters by bringing back a familiar face from the Toy Story franchise, Buzz Lightyear. However, Disney struggled to explain the connection to audiences. Lightyear is centered on a fictional character within the Toy Story universe that inspires the toy of the same name that is voiced by Tim Allen. Chris Evans provided the voice of the real Lightyear. Who in their right mind would... Oh. Between the middling reviews and confusing continuity, Lightyear became one of the rare flops in Pixar's history. It grossed just over $218 million globally off of a budget of approximately $200 million. The failure of Lightyear raises some serious questions about Pixar's future. It's somewhat ironic that Disney chose to release the better-received film Turning Red on streaming earlier this year, then kept the Lightyear theatrical window. In the past decade, it's arguable that Pixar has become too focused on sequels and spin-offs of their existing properties. Lightyear's performance suggests that a touch of originality could go a long way. Stephen King fans have had an embarrassment of riches in the last decade. Between It, Doctor Sleep, 1922, Gerald's Game, and Castle Rock, King's novels and short stories have inspired some amazing adaptations. Still, there are some King screen experiences we'd rather forget about. Even though it was an adaptation of one of King's most beloved novels, The Dark Tower failed to live up to the potential of its source material. The 
tower will fall, Roland. The same can be said of this year's Firestarter. Keith Thomas' 2022 film is inspired by both King's original novel and the 1984 film adaptation of the same name. The original Firestarter landed with a thud, and sadly the remake didn't fare any better. Released simultaneously in theaters and on Universal streaming service Peacock, the $12 million Firestarter made just under $15 million at the worldwide box office. The critical response was unanimous. Firestarter wasn't a film that was worth remaking in the first place. The original novel isn't one of King's best works, and the new film commits the crime of simply being dull. While critically reviled King adaptations like Maximum Overdrive and The Lawnmower Man are at least inadvertently hilarious, Firestarter isn't ridiculous enough to be entertaining. It feels like a pale imitation of the other horror and superhero films that are popular right now. Although the possibility of a sequel, prequel, or spin-off project has been teased, it may be best to let this flame die out. David Cronenberg essentially created what we think of as the modern science fiction body horror genre, with such classics as The Brood, Videodrome, Scanners, Rabid, The Fly, and Dead Ringers. The cult filmmaker made his return to the subgenre that he helped define this year with his new sci-fi film Crimes of the Future. I can feel you pulling things around in there. <clears throat> it's a brand new organ. Never before seen. As with any Cronenberg film, the release wasn't without controversy. Several audience members walked out during its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. The graphic opening sequence was shocking, and for Cronenberg, that's saying something. Unfortunately, most audiences did not get the chance to test their limits and check out the film. It grossed around $3.5 million at the global box office, despite being screened in over 750 theaters nationwide. Crimes of the Future dropped out of the box office top 10 after its second weekend of release. This was not very surprising since Cronenberg's previous two films, Cosmopolis and Maps to the Stars, also underperformed. While a project like Crimes of the Future isn't expected to rival Jurassic World Dominion, it's always unfortunate when an original work of science fiction fails to meet expectations. Cronenberg is one of the few auteur filmmakers who has played by his own rules throughout his career. Those scared off by the violent content might be surprised to learn that Crimes of the Future is actually quite funny with the filmmaker using his dystopian premise to satirize the nature of the art industry. Writer-director Alex Garland is one of the most important creative figures in modern science fiction. After working as a screenwriter on such sci-fi films as 28 Days Later, Sunshine, and Never Let Me Go, Garland made his directorial debut with a surprise hit Ex Machina in 2015. Stop. Ava, I said stop. However, Garland's follow-up, Annihilation, was a financial disaster that was even released directly on Netflix in some territories. Sadly, his new horror film Men didn't perform any better. While an estimated budget for Men has not been revealed, the film grossed just under $11 million worldwide. Men fell short of the box office precedent that A24 set earlier this year when Everything Everywhere All at Once became the first film in the studio's history to gross over $100 million. Audiences are willing to take a chance on original science fiction films if they are compelling, but it was clear after the early reviews that Men was unlikely to be a crossover hit. With an audience cinema score of D+, Men was a little too austere and ambiguous for the general public. While both Ex Machina and Annihilation are both definitely arthouse films, they still have a sense of humor and engaging characters. That touch of humanity is almost completely absent from this film. Men is certainly ambitious, but that does not mean it's good. Riley Stern's science fiction dark comedy Duel was one of the best-reviewed films from this year's Sundance Film Festival. Hi, I'm currently dying, and I would like to schedule a consultation. Set within a not-too-distant future, Duel centers on a young woman named Sarah who must contend with her doppelganger after making an unexpected recovery from a terminal illness. Sarah enlists the help of an idiosyncratic trainer named Trent to help prepare her. It's not the first time that Karen Gillan has had to battle herself on screen having previously played two different iterations of the character Nebula in 2019's Avengers Endgame. Gillen said that working on a smaller scale gave her more creative freedom. Unfortunately, Duel failed to break through with fans, earning just over $425,000 at the worldwide box office. Made available on AMC Plus only 35 days after its initial theatrical release, this underperformance is unfortunate. Riley Stearns had proven with his film's faults and the art of self-defense that he can create darkly humorous works of satire. While Duel is just as thematically resonant as his previous two films, the incorporation of sci-fi elements shows Stearns' dexterity with the genre. 
Australia has produced some of the most beloved science fiction films of all time. We have George Miller to thank for reinventing the dystopian premise with his 1979 Australian sci-fi western, Mad Max. That film inspired a fruitful franchise, and expectations are high for the next installment, Furiosa. Remember me? Unfortunately, this year's Gold failed to capitalize on the anticipation for Furiosa. Anthony Hayes' dystopian western didn't even hit the $200,000 mark at the global box office. The film follows the drifter Virgil, played by Zac Efron, who discovers a piece of gold in the Australian wasteland. Virgil must fight for his survival as thieves and wild dogs attempt to steal his treasure. Two weeks after the film's initial theatrical release, it was made available on the Australian streaming service Stan. Gold signifies another interesting career move by Efron, best known by a certain generation as Troy Bolton from the High School Musical franchise. Efron has taken chances on strange genre films over the past decade with the trashy murder mystery The Paperboy, the stoner comedy The Beach Bum, and the Ted Bundy biopic Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. Those may not be among the most critically acclaimed films, but they signify that Efron is willing to shed his inherent charisma. Gold could have launched Efron as a sci-fi lead, and hopefully he'll try the genre again.